What if America's next spy plane is already flying? Faster than a bullet, higher than a storm, and invisible by the time you notice it. They call it the SR-72, a hypersonic ghost born in secrecy to outrun anything we can throw at it. Tonight, we follow the faint contrails, rumors, sightings, and slips back to the one place built to hide legends in plain sight, Skunk Works. If the Blackbird defined yesterday, this thing rewrites tomorrow. Before we can understand the mystery of the SR-72, we have to look back at the legend it's meant to replace, the SR-71 Blackbird. Built at the height of the Cold War, the SR-71 was unlike anything the world had ever seen. With its needle-sharp nose, swept back wings, and titanium skin, it could cruise at over Mach 3.2, fast enough to outrun missiles, and soar above 85,000 feet, where pilots wore spacesuits just to survive. Its radar-absorbing black paint and corrugated body panels gave its stealth decades ahead of its time. It was so effective that in its decades of service, the Blackbird reportedly evaded more than 4,000 missiles without a single one ever hitting. But in the end, the SR-71 wasn't retired because it was outdated. It was retired because it was too expensive to operate. And that leaves a haunting question. If the greatest spy plane of all time was shelved not for weakness, but for cost, what could possibly come next? Not long after the Blackbird was grounded, whispers began to surface. By the early 2000s, insiders hinted that Lockheed Martin's Skunk Works, the same secretive team behind the U-2, the F-117, and the SR-71 itself, was already sketching out its replacement. Around 2006 and 2007, the rumors grew louder. Aviation forums, defense insiders, and even leaked reports began referring to something they called the Son of Blackbird. It wasn't just speculation. It was a belief that the U.S. could not afford to let the skies belong to Russia or China, both of whom were developing hypersonic weapons of their own. Every detail was shrouded in secrecy. No official confirmation, no public prototypes, just coded budgets and vague government statements. But one thing was clear. If the SR-71 was once the untouchable king of reconnaissance, the SR-72 was being built to become its ghostly successor. And the rumors only became more intriguing when whispers of Mach 6 speeds, double the Blackbird's record, began to spread. What set the whispers of the SR-72 apart from ordinary aviation gossip were the details. Details too specific to ignore. Descriptions spoke of a sleek black body tapering into a needle-shaped nose with swept wings and dual nacelles that gave it the silhouette of a futuristic predator. But this wasn't about looks. It was about performance. Where the SR-71 could cruise past Mach 3, the SR-72 was rumored to push the very limits of physics. Mach 6. At that speed, it could cross the Atlantic in under an hour. Interceptors wouldn't even have time to scramble before it was long gone. Reports suggested it could be unmanned, optionally manned, or even both, giving the U.S. the flexibility to risk machines instead of pilots in the most dangerous missions. Its stealth design promised radar signatures even fainter than the Blackbirds, while a revolutionary scramjet propulsion system would make it untouchable in the skies. This wasn't just an upgrade. It was a leap so massive that it felt closer to science fiction than engineering. And if the SR-72 truly existed, it wouldn't just outrun missiles. It would make the very idea of catching it impossible. But that raises the bigger question. Where could something this advanced possibly be built, and tested, without the world noticing? To understand the SR-72, you have to step inside the world's most secretive workshop, Lockheed Martin's Skunk Works. This is the birthplace of legends. The U-2 spy plane that revealed the Soviet Union secrets. The SR-71 Blackbird that made the impossible routine. The F-117 Nighthawk, the first true stealth fighter. All of them started as whispers, denied by officials, until one day they appeared in the sky. Skunk Works operates in shadows, hidden behind classified budgets and code names. Their motto has always been speed and secrecy, Small teams, fast results, no leaks. And that's exactly why the SR-72 fits their DNA. 
Some insiders claim billions have been funneled into black projects over the last two decades. Budgets so secret that even Congress struggles to track them. Aviation enthusiasts point to unusual sonic booms over California and experimental craft spotted near Edwards Air Force Base, suggesting test flights that can't be explained by known aircraft. But here's the catch. Lockheed never denies it. They hint. They tease. In 2013, executives even admitted on record that a hypersonic successor was in development. Yet beyond those carefully chosen words, nothing more. And that silence is the loudest clue of all. Because in Skunk Works' history, whenever the denials turn into half-truths, it usually means one thing. The aircraft already exists. So if the SR-72 is truly real, it may not be a blueprint anymore. It may already be flying. The race for hypersonic dominance isn't about prestige. It's about survival. Russia has already paraded its avant-garde hypersonic glide vehicles, claiming they can travel at Mach 20 and dodge U.S. defenses. China has tested its own DFZF glider, shocking Pentagon analysts with maneuvers no traditional missile defense could counter. In this new era, whoever controls hypersonics controls the skies, and possibly the outcome of future wars. For the United States, falling behind isn't an option. The SR-71 once gave America an intelligence edge that no rival could match. But in today's world, satellites are predictable, drones are vulnerable, and existing jets are too slow. A hypersonic spy plane like the SR-72 would mean near-instant surveillance, deep strike capability, and the ability to hit or see targets anywhere on Earth before an enemy even knew it was coming. It's not just about power. It's about deterrence. If adversaries know the U.S. can watch every move and respond within minutes, wars may be prevented before they even start. That's why whispers of the SR-72 are so unsettling. Because if it exists, it isn't just another airplane. It's the front line of a new arms race, and the stakes are nothing less than global security. But here's the question no one can answer. If the SR-72 is flying, why haven't we seen it with our own eyes? For years, strange reports have surfaced, sightings that can't quite be explained. In 2014, residents in California and Arizona reported a series of powerful sonic booms, rattling windows, and leaving officials scrambling for answers. The Air Force denied responsibility, but aviation watchers were quick to point out. These weren't the sounds of any known jet. Satellite images and grainy photographs have occasionally appeared online, showing sharp, triangular silhouettes streaking across the skies. Some call them UFOs. Others insist they're early SR-72 test flights out of Edwards Air Force Base or Area 51. Then there are the whistleblowers, former contractors and defense insiders who hint, sometimes cryptically, that Lockheed has been flying hypersonic prototypes for years. Nothing ever confirmed, of course. But the pattern is always the same. Denial dismissal, and then silence. Even Lockheed Martin themselves have played into the mystery. Executives have openly stated that hypersonic flight is within reach, and that the SR-72 concept is more than just PowerPoint slides. Yet, beyond those calculated teases, there's nothing official. And that's where the fascination lies. Because each unexplained boom, each fuzzy photograph, and each carefully worded statement fuels the suspicion that the SR-72 isn't a dream of tomorrow. It may already be here today. But if it is, one question overshadows all others. How do you build something this advanced without the world realizing it? For all the excitement around the SR-72, there's a side of the story that Lockheed Martin would rather keep quiet. The obstacles. The most obvious one is cost. The SR-71 was retired not because it was beaten, but because it was too expensive to maintain. A hypersonic jet pushing Mach 6 would demand even more. Exotic materials, fuel additives, advanced scramjets, all of which come with price tags in the billions. Critics in Congress argue that money might be better spent on drones, satellites, or missile defenses. Then there's the technology gap. Scramjets, the engines believed to power the SR-72, are notoriously unstable. 
Keeping them lit at hypersonic speeds is one of the hardest problems in aerospace engineering. For decades, prototypes failed after just a few seconds of flight. Could Skunk Works really have solved what the world's top scientists still struggle with? And of course, there's the politics. Every time whispers of the SR-72 resurface, so do debates over transparency. Some believe projects like this waste taxpayer dollars in endless black budgets. Others argue secrecy is essential, because revealing too much would hand adversaries a blueprint. Yet despite all the doubts, the rumors persist. Why? Because Lockheed has a track record of pulling off the impossible. Every aircraft once thought unbuildable, the U-2, the SR-71, the F-117, eventually slipped from myth into reality. So the real controversy isn't whether the SR-72 can be built. It's whether it already has been. And that leads us to the ultimate question. If the SR-72 is real, what would it mean for the future of warfare? If the SR-72 truly exists, it doesn't just represent a new airplane, it represents a new era. Imagine a world where reconnaissance missions no longer take hours, but minutes. Where a hypersonic craft can be launched. Gather intelligence on the other side of the planet and return before the enemy even realizes it was there. That's what the SR-72 promises, near instant global reach. And it's not just spying. Armed with advanced strike capabilities, a platform moving at Mach 6 could deliver precision weapons faster than any defense system could react. The concept of no safe zone becomes reality. For adversaries, that means even their most guarded assets could be vulnerable in seconds. For allies, it's reassurance that American air power can appear anywhere, anytime. But there's another layer. Hypersonic technology doesn't stop with the SR-72. It paves the way for new generations of fighters, bombers, and even space planes. Just as the SR-71 defined the Cold War skies, the SR-72, or whatever it truly is, could define the battle space of the 21st century. And that raises the most chilling thought of all. By the time the world finally sees the SR-72 unveiled, it may already have been flying for years. Because in modern warfare, the future doesn't arrive when it's announced. It arrives the moment it's too late for anyone else to catch up. From the legendary SR-71 Blackbird, a machine so fast it outran thousands of missiles, to the whispered existence of its hypersonic air, the SR-72, one truth is clear. America's most powerful aircraft rarely announce themselves. They emerge from the shadows only when the world is ready to see what's been flying above it all along. The SR-72 may still be classified, hidden in the vaults of Skunk Works, but the signs are there. Unexplained sonic booms, cryptic statements, and budgets buried deep in black projects. Whether it's already streaking across the skies, or still locked away in secrecy, its impact is inevitable. Because this isn't just about speed, it's about redefining global power. Hypersonics mean intelligence anywhere on Earth in minutes, strike capabilities that make defenses irrelevant, and a deterrent so strong that wars might be prevented before they even begin. So the only real question left is this. When the SR-72 finally steps into the light, will we be witnessing the future of aviation? Or will we be realizing that the future has been here all along? If you want more deep dives into the world's most secret projects, make sure to subscribe, because the next breakthrough might already be circling above us, unseen.